Let's talk aeroplanes. Airplanes can find themselves in the air from time to time. No <laughs> True. And airplanes, shh, when they do find themselves in the air, we could discuss their velocities as the velocity of a plane relative to the air. And for example, it might have a velocity of 15.0 meters per second. And we could say that this aeroplane is moving at a heading of north 50 degrees east. You can write it if you wish. But it's going at 15 meters, shh, it's going at 15 meters per second at an angle of north 50 degrees east. Follow the story if you dare. The same aeroplane that finds itself in the air moving as such relative to the air may find that the medium that it's in, that's the air, is also in motion. In other words, it's a windy day. Okay? We're not talking about air resistance, we're just talking about moving along with the air. The, just like the river washes us along when we're in the river, the wind moves us along in the air. Now the, the wind might be moving along, we'll call it the velocity of the air relative to the ground, because that's another way of talking about the wind. It might be moving along at a velocity of 23.0 meters per second at an angle of 40 degrees, north 40 degrees west. And somebody may wish to find out what the velocity of the plane is relative to the ground. Because you know if you're trying to go somewhere and you get blown off course it might matter to you. You can imagine, right? And so people would say what's the velocity of the plane relative to the ground? Or people say what's the ground speed of the plane, the velocity of the plane relative to the ground, or what's the ground speed or ground velocity of the plane? Relative to the ground. Okay? So, shh, I know we're excited. It's Friday. But I would like to find out the velocity of the plane relative to the ground. And of course, just like we said before with boats, you could use these AG and PA, the A's are the joiners. So I can say velocity of the plane relative to the ground is equal to the velocity of the plane relative to the air plus the velocity of the air relative to the ground. Can you see that the A's kind of join these together? Same as with the water, same with the river. And when I draw these pictures, plane relative to air looks like this. There, I'm just sketching it down here. Air relative to ground looks like this. And if I draw these characters, these, these vectors, tip to tail, I might translate this initial diagram into something like this. Velocity of the plane relative to the air, that's this one, plus velocity of the air relative to the ground. Obviously I'm not drawing it to scale. Okay. 50 degrees, 40 degrees, and if I wanted to know the velocity of the plane relative to the ground, it would just be the resultant. And people say, oh, that's a weirdo shape. How am I ever going to do this? Well, we talked about this two days ago. We talked about x components and y components, right? I could find the y component of this vector, and I could find the x component of this vector. I could find the y component of this vector using SOHCAHTOA and I could find the x component of this vector again using SOHCAHTOA. I would add up the y's to get the total y for this guy and I would add up the x's one of them might be a positive one of them might be a negative to get the total x vector for that guy and in the end I could use the total of the x's and the total of the y's to construct what you can see is kind of a, a narrow right angle triangle and I could use the x component and the y component for that right angle triangle to fig figure out what the hypotenuse is and the hypotenuse would be the magnitude that we're looking for velocity of the plane relative to the ground and again I could use that right angle triangle to find out what this angle is here and that would give me a heading for the direction in which this plane would go if it was getting blown off course by the wind. Does that sort of make sense? 
It's exactly the same as a riverboat problem. The only difference is, in riverboat problems, I was kind of artificially making the river go south, like directly to the south, or maybe I make, make it directly go to the east or to the west. I mean, in general, do rivers really always go perfectly in line with the cardinal directions? No. But the same is true of the wind. The wind rarely blows directly south. It's always a little off to the angle, right? So it's nice to be able to deal with x and y components with this idea of relative motion. Okay. Now the thing is, I could have given you the resultant velocity and the velocity of the wind. But that's okay. You would have just had to figure out what vector would help this vector add up to the resultant. It would be just the same question. A little bit different, okay? Just a little twist. Anyways, that's the sort of thing we're looking at in the homework tonight.